we take a look, this area from here to here, all the way down to this blue area here, is going to be the epidermis. How many layers to the epidermis? Five. Five layers, right? So what's this top layer called? Corneum. For, what's the first name of it? Epidermis. Stratum. Stratum, stratum. stratum corneum. Okay. And the next layer? Stratum lucidum. Lucidum. And the next layer? Uh, granulosum. granulosum. Think of a bunch of little grains to make it darker than the one above it. So stratum granulosum. And then what's this? Spinal. Stratum spinosum. Stratum spinosum, right? It looks like little spines digging down into the lower layer. So stratum spinosum. And then this little cuboidal layer here? Stratum basale. Stratum basale. So, uh, when it unites with the dermis, because remember that's all epidermis, uh, you're going to have these little bumps. What are these little bumps called? Papillary up? layer. Specifically? Papillae. What layer is this? Oh, um, dermis. Dermal? Epidermal. No, dermal oh, papillae. Papil dermal papillae. Yes, okay. this is the dermal papillae. Okay, so that is what's going to make your uh, fingerprints. That. Uh, joining together with the epidermal layer is going to make fingerprints. Okay. Why are fingerprints unique? Because each child, the theory is, we don't know for sure, but the theory is that each child will push, even if you have uh, identical twins in the womb, they will push on areas in the womb uh, in a different way. Okay, So that's what will cause the differences in fingerprints. Even though they're twins and they look identical, their fingerprints will still be different, even though their mm. DNA is identical. Okay? Because it, the thought is that because they're pushing on each other and on mom, um, they will push uh, and cause different ridges to be developed, hence leading to the differences in fingerprints. Okay, so let's take a look then um, at, um, you're gonna have the dermal uh, uh, papilla here, so that this will make the papillary layer here. And then, uh, here, let me remove this little, little thing here. And then from here down, you're gonna have the reticular layer. Okay, the reticular layer. Uh, this is going to be an um, uh, area that, that is uh, connective tissue, but it's going to be irregular and dense. Okay, and it, you saw that all uh, in the, uh, the slides that we had earlier. Okay, so you're going to have a few accessory structures that are going to be found in uh, the dermis. You're going to, what is this? Hair. Hair, right? And so this area is going to be? The hair. Yeah. This is going to be the follicle. Okay, this is the follicle of the hair. This is where the hair is going to be born, if you will. Um, and then uh, you're going to have a muscle that's going to attach to the hair. What's the name of that muscle? Mm -hmm. What's the muscle going to do? Erector. Mm -hmm. er uh, I don't know. Erector pili. Okay. Pili means muscle. Uh, excuse okay. me. Pili means hair. Erector means to stand straight. Okay. So it's going to cause the hair to stand straight. So erector pili muscle. So this is a smooth muscle that goes here. And then if you take a look, you see these yellow lines here uh, right around the follicle? Mm -hmm. Okay, these yellow lines are gonna be nerves. Do you, anybody remember the name of the nerves? Are they freeform nerve endings? No. Oh, okay. These are gonna be hair, root, plexus. Because this okay. is in the root area of the hair. So this is a plexus, is just a, a connection or a branching of a bunch of nerves. So this is going to be the hair root plexus of the nerve. So for example, if uh, a breeze were to blow on the hair and move it, these would be the sensors. They would be mm. able to tell, tell you that, oh, or if something crawled on your skin, mm -hmm. these are the ones that tell you because it strokes on that hair and it triggers that. Okay, make sense? Then let's say it's an area that you don't have a lot of hair on, but something strokes your skin. How can you tell? Uh, because you're gonna have these free nerve endings going all the way up into the stratum granulosum. So they're free nerve endings if they are not touching the hair follicle. Yes. Okay. And they look like finger projections. They're actually going into the epidermis. The These down here are in the dermis. They're going into the epidermis from the dermis. So are, okay. Okay. okay, so these are going to be free nerve endings. These are going to be hair root plexus. This is a hair, and it's a plexus combination. Okay. Okay. All right, so um, you're going to have the one that is not visible in this model is, anybody remember? Merkel cells or tactile cells. 
and you can see that in your lab book, and those are going to be found in the uh, stratum uh, basale. You're going to have the Merkel cells in there. Also, uh, no caps on them. So these are the unencapsulated, this one, this one, and the Merkel cells are the unencapsulated, so there's no covering to them. Uh, but you're also going to have the capsulated ones in the dermis. You have this one right here, which is called the tactile corpuscle. Okay, this is going to be the tactile corpuscle. Mm -hmm. So you see a few of them here, and this is the one that has the capsule, so you can actually see it. That's why it's called encapsulated, because there's a capsule covering it. Okay. Um, and then you're going to have the much larger one, the deeper one, that's going to, this is the one that feels uh, pressure, not just light pressure, but uh, heavier pressure, and this is going to be the lamellar, lamellar, lamellar corpuscle. corpuscle. And notice how it's lamellated, it's like layer upon layer. Okay, so that's going to be that one. The one that isn't visible on this model is the Ruffini, which basically looks like a um, hand uh, rolled cigar. Uh, and it has the, the nerve attachments on either end, and that's going to be the Ruffini, and that will notice, will feel stretch. When you stretch the, the skin, it will be triggered. Okay, let's look at some more accessory uh, organs of the skin here. What is this thing here? Uh, nope. That's the base. Sebaceous is oil, right? Yes, yeah, sebaceous okay. is oil. Hmm. This sweat is, gland? Yes, this is sweat gland. Okay, this is going to be a sweat gland, and it's going to, you can actually follow the pore all the way up. Okay, so this is going to be a sweat gland. The proper name is pseudoriferous, but I will accept sweat gland, but pseudoriferous is the, the proper terminology for that one. Okay. Then we have this one over here, and notice the way this one actually feeds into the hair shaft. And what's that going to be? That's the sebaceous gland. That's, that's the sebaceous gland. Yeah, that's the sebaceous gland. It's going to produce oil to make sure that the hair stays lubricated and it doesn't start breaking apart into little pieces there. Okay? And you can actually see another one over here. So you can see how uh, the oil gland literally feeds into the shaft to make sure that the hair is uh, properly maintained. So when we oil ourselves, mm -hmm. it goes into the sebaceous gland? Um, it's not necessarily gonna go into the sebaceous gland. It's gonna go onto the surface of the skin. What you're trying to do is keep this, the, the stratum corneum from flaking off. Because that's okay. what, you know when you get ashy? Mm -hmm. okay. That's, this is the layer that's getting ashy. Okay. Because it's not, you don't have the lubrication there. You're going to have skin cells uh, flaking off of that normally, but if it gets too much, then what will happen is it can start cracking. Mm. And now you're opening it up for an opportunity for infection. Okay, so that's what you don't want. Okay, so this is all the proper dermis. What are all these big yellow bubbles here? Adipose. This is adipose. Fat so cells. this layer is going to be the what layer? The dermis. Yeah. Hi, it's the, no, you, you said you don't want it. It's the sub, sub. Subcutaneous. No. Subcutaneous. Subcutaneous okay. or hypodermis. <laughs> okay. okay. Subcutaneous or hypodermis. That's going to be this layer, and it's made up of connective tissue, uh, specifically uh, adipose tissue is the primary uh, connective tissue there. So you said hypodermis or subcutaneous? Subcutaneous, yeah. Now, one of your books calls it hypodermis. So if you think about it, if you're going to have a hypodermal injection, where is it going? All the way down to the fat. All the way down to this area. That's painful. Yeah. So well, it's usually in the gluteal then, right? Uh, no, the gluteal is not going to be hypodermal injection. That's going to be intramuscular injection. Okay, yeah, and that's I right. I will teach you how to do one of those towards the end of the this class. So I'll, I'll show you how to do so those. So what is that uh, injection goes to hypodermis? Hypodermis? Mm -hmm. uh, that's one where you want to get it into the fatty area. So a hypodermal injection, you're putting it into the area. You're going to have... Um, subcutaneous injections, they call them the same thing. Uh, but if you're gonna have some that are just gonna be just underneath, uh, and what would those be? Probably have had them. TB injections, mm -hmm. okay? Because that, what they're gonna do is put a little bubble, push it up, okay? So you're going right just underneath this area. Underneath the basali. Mm -hmm. okay. So when for the diabetic, they put the insulin, it goes over here? That's okay. gonna be a hypodermis. Hypodermal injection. So what you're looking for is you're looking for areas that have thin skin, like the belly, and you can have fat very easily. 
Vaccine. Oh, love handles. Vaccine that we put um, vaccines depends. Most of them are going to be uh, you're going to put them in the arm, so you're not you're not going to be going you're not trying to go into the muscle. Oh, so um, the fatty ones are like the diabetic one, right? Yeah, insulin. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you think about where where you're putting those shots, you're trying to find areas where again the, the thin the skin is thin, uh, but you're hitting fat. Mm -hmm. So a good spot is going to be in the belly. You know, you just pinch. And you can go right in there because you're gonna eat, and that's why it, you, know, you all look like, oh my gosh, that's so painful. Well, yeah, it is, but it's not gonna be really, really bad because you're, you're. This is not. This looks very big, but in reality, we're talking a very small area. It's not super deep. Deep. It's just designed to to show you where everything is. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Straight forward.